Hey, Brian Thrift here, back on Clear Lake with Jamiki. It's been a couple of years. Uh, looks a little different. The water is way higher than what I've ever seen here. I think every time I've been, it's been super low, and now we've got, looks like six or seven feet of water on the outside of the reeds, and looking forward to it. You know, we got a beautiful day here in California, and hopefully we're gonna go catch some big fish. Got one on the Rambler. Schooling fish action this morning with the Rambler. First Clear Lake bass of the trip. Little guy, but fun nonetheless. <clears throat> Pulled up on a little rocky point, some tools, and fish are actually schooling on it. The Mickey Rambler 120. Just walking it slow across the point. Let's get this guy back in the water and see if we can catch some more right quick. Oh, good job. Oh, there's another one. Can't beat back to back casts. <laughs> Still a little guy, but it's fun. See if we can go three for three. Oh! <laughs> he punked me down. I got excited. Back to back to back bites and I jerk it away from him. He thrashed it. <laughs> oh, that one got it. Oh, this is fun. You can't beat a good early morning top water bite. There you, go. you see how he just slurped it on it? They're not really, I don't think they're really wanting to feed right now. That fish just grabbed it like a bluegill eating a bug off the top of the water. But he got it good. I mean, he just barely slurped it. He got the front hook all the way in his mouth. Usually when they bite it like that, they just grab the tail, but I don't know. Well, they seem to have quit responding to the rambler. Um, when you've got a shad spawn like we have here, two of my favorite things, obviously I like to start out with the rambler, and when they quit responding to that, I go with the Demiki Armor Shad. This is a five inch armor shad on a five alt Demiki D hold hook. And the water here is really clear, so I'm going with a baby bass color, which is one of my favorite colors for clear water. So let's see if we can't get them to respond to this now that they've kind of quit wanting to come up on the top water bait. And the way I like to fish this is when they're schooling and they're, if they're <clears throat> on one particular spot like this, I'll usually let the bait just kind of free fall on the bottom weightless. And a lot of times fish will bite it just while it's sinking down and then I'll twitch it and start kind of working it and walking it back and forth. <clears throat> oh, that one come up close there. There you go. Oh, yeah. Just as I suspected.
Well, <clears throat> they quit biting my top water bait. So I picked up the five inch Demiki armor shad. Got some real clear water. So I chose the baby bass color. It's one of my favorite. You can see it's kind of translucent. So when you have a clear water situation, it's obviously my first choice. Second cast, caught another fish. So when you get on a shad spawn deal, they quit responding to your top water stuff. Go subsurface, pick up this five inch armor shad, five alt D hold hook, definitely get more bites. Let's see if we can catch some more. Another one on the armor shed. That was a neat little deal, kind of a, a technique a lot of guys overlook when you're throwing a armor shad style bait. Is when fish are schooling, you'll see minnows get up on top of the water and just kind of make a V. They'll just be going in a straight line across the top of the water. And a lot of times the best way to catch fish when they're doing that is I'll take the armor shad and and just kind of wind it up. You can see how it's making just a little V like that on top of the water. And it just kind of glides right under the surface making that wake and looks just like the shad these fish are chasing. All right, I'm gonna show you how I was rigging up this five inch armor shad. This is the five inch Demiki armor shad, baby bass color. I've got the five alt Demiki D hold hook tied to 15 pound P-line tactical fluorocarbon. And what you do with this D hold, you can see it's kind of got a unique keeper on it. You just Texas rig the keeper through the head of the bait, just like you would a regular hook, but it's actually a keeper. You come out the nose with it, Slide it right up on the deal just like you would a Texas rig. And what holds this bait so good, you can see this keeper, after you get it Texas rigged up there, you stick it right through the plastic like that. You can see the top of the wire coming out right there. And that holds that bait up on that hook good, keeps it straight. To me, I like it better than a screw lock on other hooks just because you can get the bait so straight. And then just Texas rig it back in the armor shad like that. You can see. Good to go. Oh, another little guy on the armor shed. Schooling. Gotta get back out there. The conditions we've got now, early this morning in low light, the fish were really biting the rambler good and now that the sun's up, the wind's kind of laid down, it's slick. I, I went to the Demiki 5-inch armor shad, and the reason I did that is it's kind of more of a finesse approach. I'm not really working it, I'm kind of dead sticking it, and I'll twitch it along a little bit, and a lot of fish are picking it up on the fall, or actually sitting on the bottom. And then the good thing about this is you can fish the armor shad so many different ways. I can fish it like that and catch the fish when they're not up actively feeding, and then when one busts, I can fire on top of him and wake it across the top and catch him that way also. Score again on the armor shed. I don't know how many fish are down there, but I'm pretty sure the armor shed will catch them all. I caught some pretty quick on the Rambler when we first got here this morning, and they just, they quit responding to it at all. You know, it went 10, 15 minutes without a bite. So I got to thinking, you know, the, the armor shad's usually my follow-up bait when I'm on schooling fish like this. So I pick it up, 
and I've literally been catching one every cast for the last 30 minutes on this five inch armor shad. So it's an awesome bait when you've got fish, you know that are there and they quit responding to more kind of faster approaches, top waters and stuff like that. Pick up that five inch baby bass armor shad and put some more fish in the boat. The gear I like to use when I'm throwing the armor shad, right now I've got it on a 6.9 skipping special Brian Thrift Signature Series Fitzgerald rod. I've got it on a seven to one gear ratio Revo reel, and I'm throwing it on 15 pound P-line tactical fluorocarbon. And the reason I use this setup is I'm throwing the five inch armor shad on a weightless Demiki D-hold hook. So it's a pretty light bait. And having this shorter rod with the softer tip, it really allows you to make long casts with this light bait, especially when you pair it up with the 15 pound P-Line tactical line. It throws great. You can make pretty long casts with it and be accurate. And that's what you want to do when you're throwing these uh, lighter baits. Like what we had this morning, fish were breaking around sporadically. And you want to be able to land that armor shad right on them when they're up schooling. And you can do that with this setup right here. Got him. They're just laying down there kind of inactive right now. They, they were up schooling and now they're sitting kind of closer to the bottom and I'm able to throw this armor shad in there and just really fish it slow, dead stick it and drag it along the bottom and still get them to bite. I also want to <clears throat> mention the gear that I'm throwing the Rambler on. I've got this on my Brian Thrift Signature Series 6.9 Chatterbait Rod. And normally I throw it on a seven foot Fitzgerald Stunner. But what I've been doing here is kind of target fishing. But this morning we ran into schooling fish and I hadn't swapped rods yet. But this rod is perfect for throwing this Rambler 120. If you're fishing targets, isolated stuff where you've got to make precision casts and really get the bait in there tight to the reeds or a dock post or a stump or something like that, you can really make accurate casts with it. The reel I'm throwing is a seven to one um, Revo. I've got it on 15 pound P-Line PF Original Mono. And that allows you to walk this bait, make the long cast, and plus it floats. You don't want to use a fluorocarbon when you're throwing a top water bait because the line's going to sink and it's going to pull the bait under the water on a long cast. So always go with the P-Line 15 pound PF Original and go ahead out there and have some fun with the Domeki Rambler. You know, topwater fishing is one of the most addictive things you can do. I absolutely love it. And anytime there's a topwater bite, this is going to be my go-to bait to start with. Thanks for checking out this week's vlog. Remember to like, share, and tag a friend for a chance to win the gear giveaway presented by Domeki, Stormar, and Fitzgerald Rods.